Hi, everyone. This is a tutorial video on using Notion for Seminar 2. I'm, I'll be sending out some instructions for this over Blackboard. And this is a, hopefully a short five minute plus video on getting started with Notion. You need to go to worldwideweb.notion.so, get yourself an account, use your .edu email, and you'll get uh, free access to some of the plus features. When you log in, you'll probably see a screen just like this. So what I did, I went and created a new Notion account with a secondary email just to show what you'll probably be seeing here. So what is this thing? Uh, this is the getting started page. You can see some information about uh, your Notion on the side here. There's other pages, you can add more pages. Uh, I like to think of this like you know, Google Docs or Microsoft Word, where you can make pages and do word processing, but uh, you can do a whole bunch more things by adding little modules and different kinds of functionality into the pages. Unlike Microsoft Word or Google Docs, you can actually put pages inside of pages here and create a uh, whole uh, Wikipedia style things. This is the very first page, and let's just walk through some of the basics to get a feeling for how to use it. You can use it like a text editor. So we see here are the basics, click anywhere and just start typing. Okay, I'm gonna click here and start typing. Okay, so I can just you know use this like a text editor. And we're going to be doing that. I'm deleted all that stuff. We're going to be doing that uh, this week as you take notes about the Manhattan chapter reading. I'm just going to click that little thing to say that we figured that part out. Here's where Notion starts to get very interesting, telling us to hit the forward slash to see all the types of content you can add. All right, I'll click down here. Uh, we can see a little instruction hint for us, type forward slash for commands. I'm going to do that. I type forward slash, and these are called blocks. There's all sorts of things we can add in here into our Notion pages. And, and uh, the things we can add get very complicated. Let's try a few. Plain text. That's easy. I mean, it doesn't really do anything. It just allows us to type. Press forward slash again. Let's embed a, a page, embed a sub page into this page. All right, click that. Now we are taking to a new Notion page. I'll call this new page. And it's Notion is pretty nice. It, it keeps telling us hints of things to do. Press enter to continue with an empty page. Okay, enter. Now I'm on to this new page where I can do the same things we were learning about before. Where is this page? Uh, well, it's a sub page inside the getting started page. You can see that up at the top that the new page is uh, after getting started. You could click back to getting started. And this is where we were. This is where we added the new page. You can click it and go into it and go back. On the side here, when we look at the getting started, page we're on, there's a little arrow. And if you click it, it'll show anything inside. So we added one new page and, and there it is. There's lots of things you can add into uh, Notion. My mouse just died. Wonderful. Hopefully there it gets connected again. Let's try a few more. Forward slash add a to-do list. Um, this thing. All right. That thing, neat. So we're making a list with boxes. And I guess we could click these. So these are little blocks you can use. You can add headings, uh, big heading. This could be useful for your notes when you want to make sections. We can add uh, different sizes of headings, heading one, heading two, heading three. So this will make the font smaller in terms of a heading. I'll put text 
in between headings. Uh, the stuff I'm showing you right now is using Notion like a word processor. We can add bulleted lists, pretty easy. We can add oh, a toggle list. Here's a bunch of stuff. And I guess we can put things inside here. Ooh, interesting. So that in our page, look to see more. I suppose we could do stuff like this. All right. Wow, we can see more stuff. We're kind of making interactive web page like documents. Uh, we could have dividers that could be useful. Like maybe I want a divider under this heading. You can actually move things around. I'll let you explore more of the things you can add. And there's just a whole bunch of different options. So I think we explored for the basic part, just what forward slash does. And we can see that there's lots of different types of content. We can add, so I'm gonna click that off. We just saw that we can move things around. These six dots, you can, you can see them appearing on this left side. So you can click and drag things and move them around. Uh, let's say I want the link to this new page to be here move it around. You can move anything that is got these six dots, move them around. So that's pretty neat. I'm going to click that. I feel like we learned that part. Here's another tip. Highlight any text and use the menu that pops up to style your writing however you like. Okay. Let's go down. I, I made some text here. So I'm just, I mean, you could highlight any text. How about this toggle block? I highlight it and some options pop up for me. I want to make it bold. All right, click bold. How about this text? I want to make it underlined. Boom. Uh, see more useful tips. Okay. I guess I can add a comment. My comment. Neat. I'm using my uh, fake account, my secondary account, so it shows up who made this comment. That's pretty cool. So we can check that box. I encourage you to make sure that you try all these things as well. A few more basics to cover. Click the plus new page button at the bottom of your sidebar to add a new page. So the sidebar is over here, and at the very bottom is a new page. Click it, and here we go. We get another page. Um, maybe I want to call it something about, I don't know, books to read, who knows. Press Enter. So this has been uh, located in this general list of pages here, and I could click it, go back. It's not inside the getting started page. It's just a, it's being added to this general list. And, and you can add as much as you want. Uh, another new page. Whoa, can't type. Similarly to how you can move things around inside a page, you can move things around over here. So let's say you wanted this page to go inside of this one. I just clicked and dragged and moved it. I look in here. Um, this should be listed as a sub page now. Maybe I want to put all of these things into this page. So now the getting started page has two things inside of it. I guess it added it to the bottom and we can we can start uh, creating organizations for our sub pages and moving them around visually on our notion space. So it's quite an interesting word processor if you want to think about it that way. We've done this. Finally, it's possible to do um, to use existing templates to get different kinds of pre-built pages that you might find useful. 
I'm not sure we'll be using this right away in this class or even ever. Um, the more you learn about Mo Notion, you'll see that all sorts of people, businesses, and teams, um, they customize this system for their various use cases. And um, sometimes people, I guess there's like available templates uh, to uh, check out ways you can do things. Let's let's see what it's like. Here's templates right here. And you can scroll down the side and get a sense for uh, what these things are going to do. So here's a to-do list. If you click this, you'll get an example like this to start working off of uh, project and task management, meetings, docs, making a reading list of books you want to read with a Notion database, a simple budget planner, um, a dashboard for students, uh, all sorts of things are in here. These are just uh, example pages where somebody has put on these pages little building blocks and modules from Notion that they find useful for their use case. So feel free to explore all of that. In your very own Notion, uh, all of these pages that we've been kind of messing around with are in your private space and uh, other people can't see them. I'm going to be inviting you as guests individually to join the team space for our class. And um, let's see if we can figure out what that's going to look like. So I'm just going to jump over to my regular uh, account. I'm not sure. I don't think I need this. I want to delete this. All right, I've made a team space for seminar two here. And this is just another Notion page that I've structured slightly differently than the getting started page. There's a message, I made two columns and I have uh, two pages going on so far. A member pages page and a general stuff page. In member pages, when you uh, join this space, you're going to see a list of sub pages. I've hidden the list right now so that because this is going to be on the internet. Um, when you join this, it'll just be people in our class and no one else will be able to see it. Uh, I've already made a page for each of you, and I made a page for myself. And this will be your place to take notes for the Manhattan reading. Uh, assignment this week. So for me, I would uh, click on Matt. This is a blank page and add my notes any way I want to. Uh, using Notion. Oh. So across the week, I'll be in here uh, adding notes as I do the reading myself. And you'll see what I'm doing. You'll be able to click on member pages. And I, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to click on everyone else's Notion pages and see what they're doing. So we're taking notes individually, but as a group so we can see what everyone else is doing. And we're going to discuss our note taking process on Wednesday. You could go to the general stuff page. This is just a blank page. I figured we should have a place for general discussion and also just for a learning notion as we get started with this in our class. Apparently, I uh, I mean, I want to try one more thing. So I mean, at this point, you should be expecting to uh, get an invitation to join this space. And let me see if I can invite my uh, other account that I can join and see what it might look like for you. So I should be able to share and invite a person. So I'm going to put my email. 
That's fake Matt. <laughs> okay. I'm inviting myself here. And the privileges is can edit, but not share with other people. I believe what happens now is I'll get an email to join. And uh, let me go check my email to see if I, I got that email. All right, I got the email. I switched back over to uh, my secondary account and I got this little red one here. Let's see what that means. Uh, how do I? It's. I've got an update here, number one. I got an invitation. Okay. I click that. Hmm. How do I? Inbox. I don't know how to this. Okay. Uh, let's see. My my mouse is running out of batteries and my connection has been lost. Perfect timing again. I, I'm not sure exactly what's going on here, but it looks to me like after I got that invitation, when I when I click here, I've got some choices. Uh, this is my account, and this is, I, I suppose, where I got invited to. So you might see two choices. Uh, so here I am logged into my secondary account, but because I've been invited to our shared team space, I can now access our shared notion. So I should be able to go into member pages and find my page. And let's see, uh, add some stuff. Cool. Yeah. Now, um, I don't know, let's say I was trying to research the um, the first vignette in the Manhattan chapter, which off the top of my head, I don't have. I'm going to have to go run and uh, get that. G give me one second. I found the book. I was flipping through it. And I remember when I read this last time, I got to the part on Thomas Jefferson Poole in East Harlem. And I saw the picture and wow, it's a really big, interesting looking pool. It, the picture in the book was from 1936. And it, I wondered, you know, is this pool still there? Does it still look like that? Um, these are some questions I had as I was reading that. Um, and maybe I want to, you know, take a couple of minutes instead of reading the chapter and go learn about if what that pool looks like. So I might be on the internet and type in Thomas Jefferson Pool, 2180 First Ave. And, oh, looks like something is still there. That's where it is in Google Maps. That's kind of cool. I might be interested in taking a little screenshot like this. And I could go find that file and just drag it right into Notion. And I've got a picture. Uh, we could label this. I don't know, let's give it a little header. I'm going to use three hashtags and call it Jefferson or yeah, Jefferson Pool. We can resize things really nice and easily by using those little side scroll bars, which is kind of fun. You can move things around. Uh, and yeah, I just wanted to give you a sense of what you can do with media and pictures. If we had another picture, uh, I don't know, what does it look like if we zoom in on this? And can we switch over? 
I'm not sure how to get it to uh I'm not signed in, so maybe it's not letting letting me do the satellite view. That's what I was hoping for. Can we look at the pictures like this? Maybe there, there's a fun picture. Okay, 57 photos. Which one, which one looks like something from today? That's like an updated picture from what we might have seen on the textbook. That's kind of cool. Maybe I want to save that one. So I just do a quick screenshot. And I can drag that in. When I when I drag more pictures in, I have this neat option uh, to kind of make it go multi-column right away. And that's can be useful in terms of just making things appear on the page the way you want them. Like if the pictures are taking up too much space, it's pretty easy to just move those things around. I'm going to pause for another second. All right, I'm back. I switched accounts. And I think it, you might remember one time in class, I showed you some of the notes I was taking when we read the introduction of our textbook. So I did that in Notion as well. I went ahead and found that page where I took all those notes, made a copy of it, and uh, took it from my uh, personal Notion, and I copied it into uh, my member pages. Matt here, this is it. It's called Introduction Notes 1. I'm going to uh, rename this because it doesn't need to have the one there anymore. And uh, I wanted to just jump in here for a second to give you some examples of the things I was doing when I was taking notes, reading the introduction. This is very unstructured. I was just using this for myself, noting all sorts of details about things I was learning about. Sometimes I had questions like, hey, where is this place? So I went to Google Maps and, uh, you know, just saved. I just saved what I found in, in Notion just like this. Sometimes I was interested in finding links to things or uh, other source material. And it's very easy to copy and paste links into Notion so that you can click them and find them. It'll actually give a kind of nice picture of the link rather than the link if there's something in the uh, metadata for this. Sometimes I'll take screenshots of what I'm reading and just put them in for quotes, all sorts of things, you know. And uh, as I, I'm going to try to do some of the exercise as well. I'm going to read through my the Manhattan chapter and add stuff to my personal page. I already showed you some things here, some stuff to add. What I'll probably do, oops, is underneath introduction notes, make a new page. for Manhattan chapter notes. And I'll start in here as I go through. So feel free to check in on some of the things that I'm doing. If you have questions about uh, how to use Notion, feel free to go back out here to general pages and ask around. Maybe I can help you. Maybe other students will figure out how to do stuff too. And that is our short tour of Notion. Have fun, enjoy the reading. We'll see you all in next class. Remember, there's no class on Monday, but we do have class on Wednesday. That's it for now. See you then.